For Quick Tip Tuesday this week, we talked about shoulder cars and how to progress them. Um, the idea is that you go from a less constrained position into a more constrained position as you level up. So as we get better at them, we, have, uh, we start with more freedom of movement. So in, in level one, I like to hold on to something next, hold on to something that adds a little tension to the rest of my body. You could even start off just doing it in a regular stance. So I'm right here and I'm gonna go through motion nice and slow and get the entire range. Again, we just like to have guys hold on to something, creates a little bit more tension throughout their whole body if we're gripping something and allows the idea of getting a little bit more of intradominal pre uh, pressure um, as we do. So we inhale, hold that there, squeeze this a little bit, create some tension, and then go through the entire range while we're standing up. And the idea of the car also is to work the outer ranges of your range of motion. So the outer edges of your range of motion, I should say. So we're really working on making sure they get full shoulder extension, that we're rotating as much as we can, getting full flexion, and then uh, also getting adduction across the body as well. Um, the second level of that would be level two, and we would pin the chest down on the same side. So I'm doing my right arm right now. I'm gonna stand against something with my right chest wall on there. You can see I have just enough um, range of motion or space, I should say, to where I can move through the hole. I can still reach across a good bit. And again, I can even move that out a little bit to get across more. I can still get up as high as I, as I can go with, with my limited shoulder flexion and get back through the range of motion uh, as I do the entire exercise. But adding in this block keeps me from rotating my chest open at all. Because if I get to the top, for instance, and start going into internal rotation and rotating too much, the block would fall off or I would slide off the pole if there is no block there. So by adding in a little bit of constraint, we keep ourselves a little bit more honest. We're able to create even more tension because now I'm pushing my chest into the pole and squeezing with my left hand, contracting my glutes, making sure that my stomach's tight, ribs are back down in. Inhale, hold the breath there as I go through it. You can see how slow I'm moving and how difficult the range of motion is and how much less I would get rather than being up here and being able to get more of a full shoulder flexion. I'm just not able to move as much. So then we'll take that to level three. We'll go over to the wall. This is where we want to lock the uh, entirety of our body in one place. So for instance, with my arm back here like this, obviously my chest can't rotate to the right no matter how much I want to. Uh, my body, my hips can't rotate to the right no matter how much I want to without really like doing some type of contorted move. So with that, I am only getting movement from my shoulder joint, which is exactly what we want. And again, you can see just the lack of shoulder flexion and the lack of range of motion I have compared to the other two when I'm going through the motion uh, as best I can do it while talking. So that's the idea, is that we go from a less constrained, where we have more freedom of movement, to a more constrained, where we have um, less freedom of movement. And that way we're building the joint capacity and making it harder and harder on the specific joint we're trying to work.